Today we're going to take a look at the latest AI research, news, and products to either improve your life or just to keep you up to date on this insanely fast technological AI race. Let's dive into it. First up here, I'm sure many of you are aware by now, but Runway has released their Gen 3 AI video generator, and as you can see from this little side-by-side -side comparison to OpenAI's Sora, which we don't have access to yet, Gen 3 is a pretty dang decent AI video generator model, although a lot of people are saying it's not really up to snuff in comparison to something like Sora, but I have heard a lot of community members say that Runway's Gen 3 kind of scratches that Sora itch, so to speak, and, you know, gives us decent enough video generation where we can start to play around with our imaginations and really bring something to life in a way that is meaningful in comparison to the rest of the video generators we've used in the past. I will say, going through this side-by-side -side demo, I do prefer most of the Sora generation videos, however, undoubtedly, not only are the Sora generations in this example, but the Runway Gen 3s are also all cherry-picked. And pretty much, I'm always gonna say this, but with any AI image or video generator, pretty much almost any AI model out there, you have to use both of them and really decide for yourself which one is going to be better for whatever particular applications you're going to use it for because these models are so widely used for so many different tasks it's kind of hard to say one model is definitively the best at something there are like these large echelon leaps like gen 3 is quite a bit better than the first ai video generation models but when it starts to get a little bit more down to the wire like in these scenarios there are going to be some conditions where gen 3 might be better than sora or you know luma labs might be be better than Gen 3 or Kling AI might be better than Gen 3 and Luma Labs for certain use cases. However, on this channel, we do take a look at each individual model and try to identify its pros and cons. So resources like my channel or other AI focused channels are going to be pretty invaluable as we explore this technology moving forward. Oh, and folks, credit where credit is due. Amoeba GPT posted this side by side comparison on Twitter and it will be linked below. Now, folks, before we dive into the rest of today's video, Video, I have a quick word from today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. This one is a game changer for content creators. NVIDIA is the most popular AI-based video creator. They've got 25 million plus users across 190 countries. And essentially, NVIDIA AI is like having a little personal assistant for your video projects. You can start out with a simple text prompt, and NVIDIA AI will do all of the heavy lifting, which allows you to focus on the more creative aspects. For example, I can create a little YouTube short about the latest advancements in AI technology. Tired of your AI not keeping up? Claude 3.5 Sonnet is here to change the game. If you're not happy with the first version, you can just click Regenerate, and you'll get a new one that easy. This latest release from Anthropic outperforms competitors like GPT-4.0 and Gemini 1.5. They also have a feature where you can make edits using simple text commands. Need to add some subtitles? Easy. You want the voiceover to be a British male? It's all covered. Meet Claude 3.5 Sonnet, your new tech best friend. And when you have your video right as you want it, you just click Export, and NVIDIA AI handles the rest. One of their their cool new features is actually creating videos using your own voice, but you don't even need to record the voiceover. InVideo can actually use your voice and make the video for you. If your AI game needs a boost, MatVid Pro AI is your secret weapon. They also have a new multilingual feature that allows you to create videos in more than 10 different languages. So as a creator, you can reach the widest audiences. What's cool is that you can try InVideo for entirely free, and if you like it, they do have a paid plan that starts at 20 bucks a month. It removes the watermark and gives you access to millions of stock footage clips that InVideo can access for you. If you use the link in the description below and my code MatVidPro50, you'll get some extra video generation credits. Thank you so much to InVideo for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your regularly scheduled content. Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for sticking through the ad. They really do allow me to have this as a full-time job. Anyways, folks, this one kind of flew under the radar for me. This is obviously by perplexity, and they have upgraded their pro search function, which is their paid search, but I think users get something like five pro searches per week, something around those lines. Don't quote me on it. Anyways, this was published three days ago on July 2nd. 
Pro Search upgraded for more advanced problem solving. All right, so I'm going to break down this little ad video that they have Pro Search by Perplexity AI, of course. The example we're going to take a look at here is a one hour visit to the National Gallery in London including any special exhibits. The first thing that the AI is going to go off and do is find some general basic information about the National Gallery in London. After that, it's going to go ahead and identify any special exhibits because the user actually requested that. And of course, it's reading like five websites when it goes off and conducts this research. Then it's going to go ahead and actually use its large language models to plan a one hour visit to the National Gallery in London, including any special exhibits. Obviously, that information is piped on in there and it can go off ahead and create a plan for you. It understands your questions quite a bit better than some Something like Google would be able to. Essentially, data analysis is now built directly inside this thing, and I think that's due to Claude 3.5 Sonnet being added into Perplexity. You can also ask it stuff that is a little bit more complex, like what are the dimensions required for a solar panel array that would be able to power all of the US? This is not something you can easily just type into Google. You might find results from other people, but this thing can actually do the research find out current data, and then go ahead and complete the math to find the answer for you. Probably with a higher success rate just because of the actual ability to search for the most accurate information in comparison to something like ChatGPT. This one was probably the coolest that I saw. Analyze Meta's stock price from the beginning of the year, identify main contributing growth factors, and essentially go ahead and make a dynamic graph that I can actually use and chart. It even lists the sources in the chart itself, which is pretty darn cool. I have really been considering paying for a Perplexity Pro subscription and honestly for just research capabilities, I feel like it might be worth it. All right, we're going to roll down with these next few bytes pretty quickly and they all come from Rowan Chung, one of the best AI news accounts on Twitter. So first up, there's going to be this thing called Pixel Screenshots. This uses AI to analyze all of the screenshots that you have taken before or will take on your Pixel phone and essentially turn it into a database with all of that information so you could say find me a screenshot where I did this and the AI will go out and grab that screenshot for you. Obviously, there's going to be some security concerns, but I could see this being useful to pick up on information that is just lost in your camera roll or somewhere on your phone. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, the Copilot recall for Windows had like a pretty nasty reaction from the community. So I want to know how you guys feel about this one. Now, next up, this is pretty insane, but Meta has released their own 3D gen, which allows for not only the creation of 3D objects with AI, but also texturing and retexturing old 3D objects. So it's pretty darn cool. It's all pretty high fidelity. Like we've got even PBR material map generation which can make things like reflections, for example, really bring out the texture in an object and make it look real in a 3D environment. I mean, take a look at this metal pug that they apparently just generated with a text prompt. I mean, that is just absolutely insane. That looks like a pug statue that someone would buy and, I don't know, put in their front garden or something, for example, right? Pretty darn crazy. So they also did a futuristic robot and then rigged it with an animation to show how you can bring these AI created or conjured objects to life with simple animations and obviously they show retexturing assets in a bunch of different styles so this is obviously like a crochet style of some form or function and you can really see that with some of the finer details on the chicken there it all looks sort of toyish made or fabric made you've also got the pixel art theme and that's going to give us hard lines on all of these and also make the highlights shockingly in the correct places I mean especially on the chicken you can see that it's pretty darn cool so they go ahead and and they do that and then they also retexture it with the theme of horror movie and that makes everything you know very gore-esque or you know just spooky scary haunted and honestly it does a pretty shocking job at bringing all of that to life as well so i feel like there's so many options for just generative retexturing in general we can even see that where we can make a monarch butterfly or we can make it a magical arcane butterfly 
or we can do a pink and green yarn butterfly. So it's like all of these options with a bunch of meshes that already even exist. So something like this just in Blender for video game creators, for example, would be really, really magical. And my last one from Rowan Chung today is going to be that Elon Musk is revealing its Grok-2 version model in August. So that's only next month. They have been working pretty quickly to upgrade their large language models. So I'm hoping that Grok-2 is somewhat competitive with some of the top leading models, but I don't know. It does take quite a bit of time to catch up to the rest of the pack often times with large language models. In other news, folks, Crea AI just announced something that they call Scene Transfer. It allows you to create new scenes for current objects pretty much in seconds with very accurate light and color consistency over time. So this is like a more advanced version of a style transfer, let's say. I think the demo video that they have here is really telling of what its capabilities are, and honestly, I might test this one out and it might be become a full-length video. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Anyways, we've got this image of a Porsche here, and it's marble, so there's a very specific texture on this car and we want to maintain that. So now they go ahead and they upload this water.png file and that gets dragged over into scene image. And when you swipe over and the AI does its work, now it looks like this car is completely underwater and it does a great job at maintaining that exact same marble texture and all of those fine intricate details of the car. It doesn't really mush it up or screw it up at all. It's like a true style or scene transfer like Kriya described. This is incredibly promising stuff. And they've got a bunch of examples. Here's a more cyberpunk look. Again, we see that exact same marble texture. We can bring it right to the ocean as well, and it changes all of the lighting on the hood of the car, but yet again, it does keep this same exact material. So it has that AI understanding of what is this? Is this a car? What material is it made of? How to reflect in the sunlight with water all of around it? It's incredible stuff. So this is one that I'm really excited to look a little bit Bit deeper into and of course going to be linked down below but this is really awesome stuff now this one right here folks is just absolutely ridiculous this is voice isolator 11 labs has trained a AI model here to take in your noisy garbage microphone input and actually clean it up and produce usable results so this can be useful for those who have to work in a very noisy environment and record in it obviously people who record out in the real world world out on the street could really make use of this and then obviously for those times when you do screw up your audio for example this could clean it up and fix it and it works really well they test it by quite honestly blasting the microphone and speaker with a leaf blower so let's go ahead and take a listen need to remove background noise from your video use our new voice isolator model for crystal clear audio every time I mean, that's just, that is absolutely ridiculous. It's so good that I feel like you could go out and record on the street or record on a very windy place and then apply this and you don't even have to worry about the audio. Typically in the past, people would spend a lot of money on special microphones or special covers for their microphones and setups to reduce problems like this out in the wild, out on the street. Now this just seems to take care of all of that digitally, which is mind boggling. It sounds really, really good. Now this one right here turned out to be a pretty big deal. If you guys remember, finally we did get open source stable diffusion three, but the license was a little rocky. The commercial terms, how you can use it to make money, which is the most important part of the license was a little bit fuzzy. It was a little too vague. So much so that Civit AI, a leading distributor of AI models, was like, nope, no Stable Diffusion 3 allowed on our website until this license gets cleared up. So Stability AI seems to have made things right from the most part. I'm no lawyer, so I can't exactly tell you the license as specifically as a professional would be able to. But they're acknowledging that this latest release with Stable Diffusion 3 Medium didn't really meet the community's expectations. Non-commercial use remains entirely free. Small businesses under a million dollars in revenue per year also have free commercial use, which is nice to see. They've also removed the limit cap, and they're also noting something about the quality of the model. A lot of people are complaining about Stable Diffusion 3, 
It is a base model that's unfine-tuned, so you're going to see issues in some areas, but they are still working to improve the model overall. And now that hopefully places like Civet AI will allow Stable Diffusion 3 based models back up on their website, we can see what people can actually get up to with a Stable Diffusion 3 model. Remember, for Stable Diffusion, fine-tuning and those custom personalized models are really, really where the fun is at. Now this right here, folks, is actually a video out painter. Hopefully they release this as open source because it does look pretty decent as you can see from these little demo videos they take a source video and they crop it in so you can't see things that should have already been in the image and they let the AI try to guess what that's going to be and in most cases it does a pretty good job and they did some different anime clips some different movie clips TV show clips for these examples and it expanded them in ways that honestly makes a lot of sense so video out painting is something that is going to be added to models in the future, no doubt. I hope they release the code and make this open source because it'll benefit the entire community. Now for another bit of research here, there is Genau. This is a scalable transformer based audio generation architecture that can generate ambient sounds and sound effects. Now the quality isn't too great, but I'm hoping that they can increase this because AI generated sound effects is a pretty underexplored and under researched area of AI audio generation and I'd like to see it expand in the future. So you can kind of hear there, some of the sound effects are better than others. It's definitely not perfect, but like I said, this area of AI audio generation research is kind of brand new. It's really not something that's explored too deeply. The best sound effects I've heard are from Eleven Labs so far, so I hope this is open source released and we can see some improvement in this area. Thank you so much everyone for watching today's AI news recap. I haven't done one of these in quite some time, so I thought it would be nice to just wrap up everything from like the past week for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and try to enjoy yourself in these crazy times.